and looks like we're just about to get into the match. So at this level are 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 your NCOs, which for those of us that don't know, those are those are kind of, those are your squad leads. Um, do they do, do they typically take on a, a leadership role within within their squad in general, or is is uh, is that is that purely uh, a gameplay mechanic? It it depends on the team. Some teams you will have the, the the sort of leaders of the team taking that NCO role. Other teams you'll have leaders who don't feel as comfortable in that role, and they'll have designated players to take those roles, and they'll tell them what to do or whatever. Um, and other teams it'll it, it'll just vary. Some teams are are less or more leaderless and more uh, you know just kind of working together as a team, taking ideas from whoever whoever suggests them. It really depends on the team, I think. So I would say for most part, uh, the NCO is a uh, is more of a gameplay mechanic, but some teams do choose to uh, incorporate that into their team structure. So okay. And it looks like um, we are live now with the Entente attacking first, SMW playing CP side first again. We do have Cuck pushing immediately up on this far left side. And not and, and doing decently well. Four of them already up about halfway through the uh, through the map. SMW making a good spread. Looks like some of these cut players are moving to the right side of the map. Looks like Storm Ginger's gonna have quite a few to deal with over there by himself. And talking about this cut team, one player I would keep an eye on, a competitive player for a very long time, is Kalinka Dink, uh, who was a player who was on PC for a time. He was in teams such as WC. Uh, before and and other teams before that he, he's definitely a very veteran competitive player probably the most well-known competitive player on this cuck lineup and cuck taking good position on that uh and, and getting into that trench very quickly it seems now, like, they're fairly unaware of that spawn on the left though that might turn out to be a problem for them yes it looks like it may Pijack are going to come back to try and deal with that and good flank by him He's going to get behind Euro, Fuhrer, and Manchi. Manchi aware of his position now, though, but Dragons can. Great teamwork there by Cuck. Pijack are kind of baiting for Dragons can there. And taking out those players. So they're doing a good job. And they've gotten in on the right side as well. They're not going to be able to clear out this trench, I think. Fabian, the only one left alive. Pijack are being very effective right now in the middle of that trench. Yeah, we might we might see SMW lose that lose that trench right about now. And there we go. That's going to be probably a cap very shortly for Cuck. And we're going to see SMW push up on that left side. They're going to get in, but still a good amount of control for Cuck and some players coming up behind. Dragonskin and Kalinkin are going to come up behind those SMW players as our choir mo flight holding down in the middle of the map. Dragon's Ken gonna go down. It's gonna be down to Kalinkadink now to take, take, put some damage on the back side of this SMW team. But they are gonna be able to retake that left side. Now it's SMW on the left and um, Cuck on the right. So good play from both teams here, making it a competitive match from the first moment. Shaping up to be a much more competitive match than uh, than our previous game here. Yes, most definitely. Well, Dragon's can definitely showing to be a very strong player so far for Cuck, as well as he, he seemed to be playing the part of picker. Yes, he did. Letting his teammates kind of go in first, mm -hmm. distract the enemy for him, and, and then just picking people off. Very good play by him. Clinkadink as well. <coughs> Funk now the only one holding on this side, and he's going to get taken out by that 75mm artillery, which is going to allow Cuck to get in. Again, once again, Cuck are in on both sides, but Arcana flanking on that right side going to clear that out. But again, once again, uh, SMW clear out one side and immediately Cuck are in the other. Oof, Arcana with a couple excellent uh, kills there in the trench melee range. Yes, great play from both teams so far. This is a super competitive at this point. I yeah, do believe much more back and forth. It does seem like Cuck are starting to cap the trench, and only Banshee up for SMW. 
this is definitely going to be a cap for Cuck unless he can spawn in a large number of players for his team. It does seem like they have an ideal spawn for this, though, with uh, Banshee spawning his team on the right and the rest coming in on the left. They could possibly get them in a crossfire, but it looks like that's not going to happen. Those guys on the left are down. Great play from Cuck and great communication for them to deal with the two pushes from both sides. Again, Banshee the last one left, and that is going to be a cap for Cuck. One cap for Cuck. Can I just say, this is by far the uh, the most I've ever heard the phrase Cuck used outside of a R the Donald uh, Reddit thread. <laughs> yes, probably. That's, I mean, that's just got to be what they're after, right? Yeah, th I think it's the general intention. Yes. <laughs> Dragons can still playing that uh, that that more pulled back picker role. Uh, still seems to be landing his shots. Doing extremely well at it. Yeah. And Pijack are just running out into the no man's and stabbing Fabian to death. He has been playing very aggressive. I've seen him pop up on the trench a few times. He's shifted uh, all across the trench. He's he's playing very well for how aggressive he's doing. Yeah, he's playing a sort of pusher role, the sort of role I used to play in my teams back in the day. Uh, a very It's not an easy role to play, being that aggressive and having some success. You really have to be aware of where your teammates are situated and where the enemy is situated to have success with that role. So he's doing a very good job at that. But SMW seeming like they might be able to take this back. Cock spawn in the middle, but they're going to be flanked by both sides. Yeah, Requiem is and in trouble. They're going to try and take back this, and Pijacker is the type of player who might have a chance at this. Fabian, though, I think, aware of his position. And Funk just lying there. Pijacker going to bash him again. Fabian not communicating to his teammate that there's a player right behind. What is... Fabian might be... He's just waiting for them to go in and then strike. Oof. When he's least expected. Either that or he's lagging out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's either Arcus. very patient or having serious connection issues. <laughs> or maybe a bit of both, who knows. Maybe Ugh. he's being very patient with his connection, connection issues. <laughs> <laughs> but seems like the roles have been reversed and now Cuck almost entirely uh, killed. Well, they just spawned back in a few times. Wow. Require Mo Flight doing a very good job at staying in that middle and just keeping spawning his team. But SMW are going to recapture the trench. Very competitive so far. A very back and forth match. We'll see if Require Mo Flight can continue to spawn his squad there. He does spawn three players, and he keeps spawning Pijacker in the trench too, who, with this very aggressive style, is being very successful. And that's going to be those players in the middle wiped. Now it's dead to who am I blowing to try and take out these players on the left. I was hoping I wouldn't have to say it first. <laughs> we get to say some fun things as casters of this kind of thing. It's, it's now down to who am I blowing? Evidently, this is the Cards cards Against Humanity version of Redone that we're casting right now. <laughs> I guess I, I, I don't know what to expect from Team Cuck. <laughs> well, the game, I believe, is rated uh, M for Mature, so... Uh... <laughs> I mean, we are talking World War One here. Yep, yep, definitely. Uh, some violence and... Uh, sexual references for and this definitely tournament. some trench foot lots of trench foot lots of trench foot yes Kalinkanen gonna push up here he's gonna might take out cannon fodder too he does great play from Kalinkanen there to take that left side and now we have one player on each side of the map for cuck and SMW sandwiched in the middle the black hand picking at that long range doing a decent job of it Right now, Fabian and Banshee uh, top of the leaderboards, but Dragon's Kin is right behind them, just doing a great job uh, picking for his team. Yeah, look at him just holding this this right fort. He's going to have to take out Banshee here. And he's going to go down, but he does just stay alive long enough to spawn his team and spawn Pijacker in. He goes straight for the aggression, takes out Banshee, but Fafau is going to deal with that problem quickly. And one more minute of defense for SMW before they can go on the attack. And Cuck going to try and cap the trench again before that time is up. Oh, 
Um, looks like Cock on the right side. SMW spread out throughout the middle. And Cock doing a very good job at picking off SMW in the middle here. Now just CPU left. He's the only one left for that team, by the way. Uh, there He's going to spawn in four of his players, the rest coming on that. This is a good spawn for them. They're going to be able to flank that middle push from Pyjacker. Cuck definitely seems to be taking advantage of that of that spawn. They've been uh, they've been very patient, and somehow SMW just hasn't dug out uh, that NCO. Yeah, it can be very difficult to clear out these forts once the attacking side has gotten a foothold in them. It does require some good teamwork and some flanking to happen. Uh, and so, just uh, for our viewers that aren't familiar with the game, uh, 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 the foothold. Could you expand a little bit on what exactly a foothold means? Because that's not you're not just using that as a as a general term that there's guys in the trench. A foothold is a game mechanic. Yes, yeah, so foothold. When you're attacking, you get a foothold uh, by having if if the time runs out and you still have players in the trench, you get what's called a foothold over time. Which means as long as your attacking team maintains players in that trench, you still get a chance to attack and cap the trench. If none of your players are in that trench, then you lose. Unless you get the momentum, which requires you to get 40 kills. If you get 40 kills, then you get more time in order to continue attacking the trench without having to worry about maintaining your foothold over time. So it's a and very those, interesting mechanic. Those 40 kills, uh, four of yours, you can see uh, just above the map. We are uh, currently at uh, 35 out of 40. Um, five more kills, and we are we are entering the range that he was just talking about. Except for that, it just reset because it seems like SMW has actually just capped the trench, or not there SMW, rather Cuck has capped the trench. Mm -hmm. But Cuck taking can... the lead. A large concern for SMW at this point will be getting close enough to get those team spawns, uh, because you are very visible from across the map. Uh, and it seems like Cuck is going to take use that to their advantage and just try and take them down as they show up. Especially because uh, most of these players will be playing on very low settings, which means these trees, while they do provide some cover, there's you're often able to see players through them, through the branches, through the leaves, and some of these players are very good, which means they can see you go behind a tree, and they'll just shoot into the tree and predict where you're going to be. Your bullet will go right through and still kill you. So you do have to be very careful crossing these open spaces, even though there is some soft cover. It doesn't always necessarily mean that you're safe. But SMW doing a very good job at pushing on that far left slash right side. It's hard to say, because depending on the team's perspective, but for me right now it is the right side. So they're getting control of that right side of the trench. Good, good on them. And Cuck going to have to deal with that. Looks like they're dropping artillery over there. This could be very bad for SMW. Could deal some serious damage, and it does. Who am I blowing with a bunch of kills from that artillery? Very I'll intelligent move on his yeah. part by saving that until uh, until the opportune moment, rather than just sending it out when it's ready. You know what? I'll tell you who he's blowing right now. It's SMW, because he just blew them all to hell. Um... Uh, but they still maintain their foothold, a few of them staying alive, spawning in the rest of their squad. And Fafau, kind of playing in a, in a sneaky situation, maybe going to try and take out some of these players on the left side of the map. And the uh, SMW artillery are going to come in on the other side of the map and take out players there. Um, Looks like we got Banshee on the uh, on the right side, uh, holding things down as NCO. Yeah, this is oh, a actually. super back and forth match, much much closer than the last one. We we've gone through about 15 minutes of play, and still on that first trench, no decisive victory has been won by either team at this point. Cock in the slight lead, but. Meeks, what do you think that SMW needs to change here in order to be able to throw back the cut defense? I think they need to play a little bit more passive. Uh, they need to be able to work from one side. They need to really develop um, kind of their picker positions, uh, which is what Cuck has been doing this entire game. Um, and they really just need to make sure to not get squad-riped. They need to keep 
uh, certain people back, make sure they're always going to get a spawn in that trench, because if they have to come through no man's land, it's going to be the end of them. And if they can't recap this and move on to the next Santan trench, I think we might actually up out of this. Yeah, I mean, it's a difficult situation because what we keep seeing from SMW is they're getting bogged down in the middle of the trench. Usually on this trench, what happens is when the attackers take one side of the trench, you want to entrench yourself on the other side to ensure that they can't cap. But we haven't really seen SMW do that very much. There's a few times where they've controlled one half of the trench, but they always push out of it into the middle, and then Tuck comes from behind, gets that other side of the trench, and then sandwiches them. This is the main problem we've been seeing for SMW. I think you're right. They haven't really had a, a, a good base of operations to sort of spawn their waves from and, and keep on fighting Tuck. We have, uh, we have yet to see a gas squad uh, in this game. Is that true? Yeah, not in this game so far yet. No. Would uh, d would you think that would might be a decent change up to start uh, breaking that pattern they're stuck in? It may be on some maps, but probably not on this map because the map is so wide that gas isn't going to take up a significant portion of the trench. The gas is much more effective on some of the more narrow maps like Artois or Argonne. On a map like this, you may it may be somewhat useful, but I think that artillery or recon is going to be more useful for you, given how just how vast and wide the map is. And it's kind of a double whammy as well, because they do need to play more passively and kind of pick those positions, but they also need to worry about uh, that artillery coming in from Cuck, which has been extremely effective. Uh, so while they need to really pin themselves down, they need to spread out so they can avoid that massive artillery that's going to come at them. So I definitely just noticed uh, Pijacker seems to be a much more mobile player, uh, utilizing those uh, those jumps in and out of his shots. Is that is that a more common strategy uh, than perhaps you, you would think with this game? Uh, it being a bit more slow-paced in general, he seems to be a bit more run-and-gun. It really depends on the style of the player. Um, most teams will have a nice balance of that sort of more picker style and the aggressive kind of pusher style. That, that was the role I kind of played in the teams that I played in when I used to play competitively. And it is a it it's it's a kind of counterintuitive style because the style is about throwing off your opponent and doing things they don't expect you to do. So it's kind of weird because it's hard to be a successful player when you're playing the game in a counterintuitive way. But that's kind of the point of that role. So it's definitely a type of uh, a, t a type of skill set where you have to be prepared to die a lot. But your deaths are helping keep the enemy team on their toes and concerned about, oh, he could come from behind me or he could come from this direction or wherever. Where you, right. the, the, goal, the main goal of that player isn't to get a lot of kills. It's not to have a lot of... It, 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 it's mainly the role of that player is to have effect on the mental state of the other team, to make them concerned about positions that they wouldn't normally be concerned about, which will take away some of their focus from your, your teammates' aggressions. And I think Pijacker is doing a very good job of that. We've seen him play good positions where he's been supporting uh, Dragon's Ken and letting him get more picks. We've seen positions where Who Am I Blowing has been getting cleaning up those kills for him. It's just, he, he's doing a very good job of working with his team and playing that role in an effective way. Is uh is let's take a look at the stats. Is is Dragon's Kin is yeah, is Dragon's Kin up there still? He seemed to be uh yeah, he was on fire to start the match. The major players right now are Dragon's Kin, uh Pijacker and Who Am I Blowing for Cuck, and uh Fabian and Arcana and Banshee are the big ones for SMW. And it looks like SMW has finally managed to clear this trench and are now on the attack. For the first time in the game, they're on attack be, uh, of an enemy this trench. Would be a a big transition for SMW if they can actually take hold of something. This game has been so back and forth so far. Uh, and it seems like some kind of momentum like this to be valuable. Seems like Cuck were really not prepared for this setup. We already see SMW on that right side of the trench before Cuck can even get set up. But the, this trench has nice, nice long lanes of fire, which uh, these pickers like Dragons Ken and Who Am I Blowing can use to pick off these SMW players from a very long range. So it'll be interesting to see how they do on the defense here. Uh, footholds are hard to keep on this trench. It's kind of the opposite of the trench we were just playing in. This is a hard trench to keep those footholds in because of these long lanes of fire. 
But it is also, if you cap this trench, it's very hard for the other enemy team to come back and get it because you kind of just have a straight firing line where there's very few places to flank. So we'll see how SMW can do here. If they could cap this trench, they'd be in a very good position. Yeah, I definitely, I, I definitely have noticed the, uh, the those long lanes of fire. Uh, that seems to be. Um, does that does that favor any particular weapons? Any any particular styles? Certainly, the the, the long rifles and the picker style. This does favor carbines are good in this trench too. Uh, pistols not as much uh, because pistols are really good when you have a very curvy trench and you're kind of going around the curves, clearing them, and fighting one guy at a time. This is a more long range where you may be fighting multiple people at a time, or you may be uh, fighting at long ranges or short ranges. I'd say a carbine is probably the preferred weapon for a trench like this. The uh, the strategy from both teams seems to be going uh, both uh, to the outside of the trenches and move inward from there. Uh, is that is that is that pretty common in on this map, or are we looking at something that is just a result of how uh, Cuck seems to be taking over the middle of, it's of the trench? It. It's definitely a very common strategy. Uh, running up the middle on this map, occasionally, uh, if you can kind of get some luck, it'll work out for you because then you can have a good field of view to both sides. Um, but the safer play, the more strategic play, is to work on those flanks. Uh, you want to be able to get down, hunker down, get those team spawns so you can start to kind of push uh, more effectively. Which is what we're seeing SMW do right now. They've gotten a nice control of that right side, and now they're pushing straight on in. Oh, and great grenade throw there from Cannon Fodder. He's going to get taken up, though, by Emo Syndicate. And that was a good push by them there. I think they might be capping the trench right now. They did just uh, throw off a cock push from that right side, and they're not quite capping two players in the trench for both teams. So Fafoa kind of playing the spoiler position on this right side. The rest of his team are on this left side, rather. The rest of his team on the right side, he's just kind of sitting behind these trees, picking people off of the, as they try and move up to the firing line. And he doesn't seem to be getting much resistance. Looks like Who Am I Blowing is looking for him now. Seems like Cuck is now aware of his position. But he's still in a good position where, yep, Who Am I Blowing friendly can take him out. <clears throat> SMW is going to need to start playing very passively. Make sure they stay alive, get those kills to bring in the momentum, and extend that time. Because right now they're in foothold, and if they start getting wiped, they're going to be back on defense and lose their chance to win this half. Yeah, of course, only three minutes left, so any cap at this point, any team that gets a cap at this point is probably going to win. If yeah. SMW can Big get a cap here. here, if SMW can get a cap here, they're going to be up one trench going into the second half. If Cut can repel them and quick make a quick attack on the, on the SMW trench, they could go up one trench as well. So it's going to be very, very important to see what happens in the next few minutes. Of course, we could go into the second half with a tie game, which... Uh, which would put a lot of pressure on both teams in the second half to win it uh, handedly. But it looks like SMW going to get a good chance at capping here. Only who am I blowing left in the trench. And it's going to be the beginnings of a cap for SMW, perhaps. But we do have some flanking players coming in here. The Black Hand going to flank Funk and Fabian. And he's going to clean that up. And now only two players in the trench. And Cuck are going to spawn in. I do not think that SMW are going to get the cap here. They were able to get that momentum. So they do have 30 seconds to try and get that foothold. But Cuck are going to start to think, okay, can we repel this? We have a minute and a half to try and push very quickly and cap that trench. They're going to have to play it. With 15 seconds left in this defend, they are going to have to sprint SMW into that trench if they want to re-get that foothold, which looks CPU. like they may get. Yeah, CPU just needs to go prone right now and stay alive and maintain that foothold over time. Foothold over time, CPU the only one in. Banshee and Fafoa are going to want to push in quick so that they can maintain that foothold. They do not want to give Cuck a chance at capping the trench. Arcana going to push down. and He's going to take out the Black Hand. Clinkett ain't going to be aware of his position. It's now just down to CPU. A bunch of players coming on his position. Clink is going to be aware of it. He's going to get stabbed. A huge though. disadvantage here. Yeah. CPU in a tight position, though surviving somehow and maintaining that foothold over time. Really, even just any amount of time he can stay alive is the amount of time that they don't have to attack. And that's great play from CPU. Wow. 
just totally went unnoticed. That's uh, that's a big mistake in terms of uh, Cuck's situational awareness. And nades are now going to go in and probably clear him out, and that's going to be an attack for them. But they only have 52 seconds. I would be am if they can get a capture in 52 seconds. That would just be absolutely amazing. I do not think that is going to happen for them. So I think we're looking at a tie game at this point. Of course, uh, they're going to do everything they can to try and uh, see if they can't cap this. And SMW going to try and ensure that it's a draw. And it means we'll have to go to the second half. And if the second half is a draw, we will have to go to counting the kills from both halves. Yeah, telling from team chat, it looks like we're gonna try. We're gonna see uh, SMW uh, play it slow and settle for the uh, settle for the draw here. Yep, we're gonna have to see how the second half will go. Now, note that this is a slightly uh, c uh, central powers sided map, which means that uh, I think the Cuck will be feeling quite confident going into the second half that they can be more successful on that central powers side than uh, than SMW was. Should be interesting to see. What? No, no, we're going into the second half. So that was definitely a much closer and, and, and much closer. Match. Yeah. Uh, Great yep, play that... from both teams. Uh, Cuck definitely impressing me. I hadn't really seen them play competitively very much, but definitely doing a good showing for themselves. Obviously, players like Kalinka Dink have been around for a long time, but players like Dragon's Ken and Pyjacker uh, showing some very high-level skill uh, for their kind of first competitive showings. Yeah, Cook really seemed to take them by surprise there after um, a relatively easy match against Average Joes. SMW, though, showing some... some uh, some good resolve, though, to come back in the, near the end of that half and gain some momentum and almost take that trench from Cuck. So good play from them there. It'll be interesting to see how it goes in the second half with the sides having swapped. Um, maybe certain teams are more comfortable on certain sides, um, whether it be with the weapons or just the map. So it'll be interesting to see how Cuck do on the uh, CP side, whether they do better or worse. Um, both teams are going to want to show a dominant performance in the second half, though, to ensure that we don't have to go to counting the kills. Um, and it does seem that Banshee may not be in this. Uh, I just read in the chat that he does have to go for now. Not sure if he'll be returning. If he uh, is not returning, that is a big loss for uh, SMW. Indeed. Yes. It would definitely be a big loss for them. Hopefully they have some people they can bring in in his stead. Uh, but even then, uh, there's not very many players on their roster who can rival the power that Banshee brings to that team. Looks like they are going to bring in Haunt Juancho, which is one of their better players. Um, that, is, that, is, uh, that is really too bad uh, for SMW. The timing... Uh, that uh, that his mom had to call him to mow the lawn just was terrible there. <laughs> but but you know what the mo the, the lawn has to be mowed. Lawn's uh, got to get mowed. Yeah. I if mean, it's not going to happen now, it's never going to happen. I mean, what will the neighbors think if our yard looks terrible? You know, it's it's a very important thing. What I'm saying, you can't be like, mom, I'm trying to win World War One here. I know the homeowners association is on my back. <laughs> <laughs> but so are the communists. <laughs> Anyways, we will see if they can get an eighth player. Hopefully they can. If not, the fun shop uh, 
will uh, have to suffice. It was, it was really only a matter of time before someone uh, made a, a an uninformed World War One history reference, <laughs> uh, and so I, I guess I can fall on that grenade. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely a, a good grenade to take for for all of us. Mm -hmm. At least I haven't mentioned anything about Nazis. I'm just yeah, waiting for someone good. to make a stupid comment about Nazis being involved. It's surprising. It's surprising just how many references to Nazis you see playing in pub games in Britain. Uh, it's maybe an, an unfortunate indictment of the American school system. <laughs> <laughs> Is there ever a smart reference to Nazis, though? Mm, I mean, maybe if you're talking about World War II. <laughs> but I will agree that if you count all references to Nazis in history, there's probably more dumb ones than there is smart ones. <laughs> Someone, someone's going to write a thesis on that, and they're going to have to dig through just miles of YouTube comment garbage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, guys. Let's get back to the game. Looks like we're still waiting on possibly SMW to get one more player. Oh, yes. Of course. SMW will be bringing in uh, one of their uh, a backup that they, that they uh, do sound very confident in. Uh, although the loss of uh, uh, I forgot his name already, Banshee, uh, the, the lawnmower. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be huge. It's gonna be huge. He was he was he was uh, he was near top kills for them uh, the last couple games here. Definitely one of their uh, highlight players. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like they do have an eighth coming though, so we will see. We're always happy when we have an AV8, and we're done. <laughs> So, uh, <clears throat> oh, it looks like they will be getting actually a friend of ours, uh, Cry, who is a teamless player at this point, but he does come in and substitute for uh, teams every once in a while, and a pretty decent player, uh, good friends of myself, Tyler, and Zab, so uh, hopefully he, uh, he does a good job for them. Oh no. You guys, we said something about Nazis, and now there's a Nazi argument uh -oh. going on. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. They may have unleashed, unleashed the horde. <laughs> uh, fr fruity, fruity, hi guys. Just so you know, the, uh, the fact that Nazis were not invo involved in World War I was the very point of what we were talking about. I mean, technically, many people who would later go on to be Nazis were involved in World War One, but they, at the time, were not Nazis. So, right. Should have brought my Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> Quick to the Wikipedia articles. <laughs> But definitely the loss of Banshee is going to give Cox some confidence in this second half that they may be able to uh, edge out a victory. Uh, that would that would be the the, the deciding uh, victory in this match. That would uh, that would be victory number one for Cuck in the round robin style tournament that we got going on. Uh, next, Cuck will be playing Average Joe's, uh, which is a dodgeball reference and probably a copyright issue. <laughs> uh, as well, and then uh, and then we'll be moving on to the semifinals uh, after Average Joe's plays Cuck, and we will then know who takes on one E uh, in the first game, which is Emperor's Royal Dragoons. Do you guys? Do you guys play um uh uh the what was it Legend of Dragoon? What is that? What it's called? PlayStation no. One. Oh, that was a terrific game. I'll believe. I'll trust you on that one. <laughs> right. Looks like you we do have. Cry joining the server, so we should be about to uh, start the match. Though we do have a ninth player joining on that side, I'm a little bit confused. Reloading. 
Oh, it looks like they have actually got uh, their own player. So it looks like crime may not be required. Clan tag and everything. Exactly. We are, are going to live on to restart go, here, guys. Try, try deciding to go with the dirty uh, no-name strategy to confuse the casters. Uh, so I'm kind of glad he's not playing because he decided to do that in a competitive match. Uh, yeah. I would have had a, a a bit. I would have had to have a bit of a a stern talking to him later if he had decided to play that way. <laughs> yeah. Probably would have called him a fuck or something. <laughs> The unknown soldier. <laughs> so it looks like he is going to disconnect and we are going to get Leo back up in that uh, last position. Uh, so the casters at the moment, guys, uh, to respond to Toothpickin' Tintin, uh, we got we got Soren, uh, Nord, and Meeks, all uh, prominent players in the uh, competitive, uh, uh, I was about to say Overwatch, uh, the competitive <laughs> Verdun uh, community, uh, and I, I myself, uh, you can call me Blunder Boy, go by also by Waste, or by, uh, by Adam. Um, and we also have Fred, Fred Breezy, president of OP Noobs in the background, running the show. Yes, doing a very good job with all the spectating and stream management you, that you guys you. are seeing. Thank you, guys. I'm, yeah, trying, I mean, I'm trying my best. doing okay. I'm trying my best. I wouldn't best. say great. It's, I'm, doing, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing decent. <laughs> it's a work in progress. <laughs> Looks like the match is about to start. It is live. So this is the second half. We're going to see it. We need to see one team come out with a at least one trench advantage in order to win the map. Otherwise, we will have to go to kills, which uh, is something that our admin team would not be happy about because it means doing a lot of math. Uh, so hopefully that does not happen. <laughs> it means do doing a lot of math? It's a calculator. Yes, yes. but no. Uh, math, math, math isn't fun. We're here to play Verdun, okay? <laughs> We want to play for done and do zero math. Uh, so hopefully, we will see a victorious team. <laughs> SMW being very aggressive right out of the gate. They're not really taking the time to pick off those cuck defenders. Uh, they're just kind of running aimlessly, it seems, into uh, no man's land, and they're just not making any any progress. Well, it's got to be tough for them losing one of their prominent pickers. It's definitely going to mess a little bit with the structure of their team, and they're going to have to figure out a way to deal with that. And who am I blowing just going absolutely insane? Six kills already and just the first minute of play. Wow. But yeah, Funk, SMW on their heels right away. But Funk going to get up in this left-hand side behind who am I blowing. Maybe he can take him out. CPU there as well. Hachi man coming up to enforce, but they're they're gonna get taken out, and that's a foothold on that left side for SMW. Have players like Arcana coming up the middle as well. Actually, three players coming up the middle: uh, Arcana, Fafoa, and Huanchop. Good Junke play, actually. Playing a little passively here, uh, not really taking the time to try and get some of those long-range picks that might help his team out. Well, again, like I said, some of these players may be being put in positions that they're not necessarily comfortable with because Banshee's yeah. missing. This thing, it means having to switch up kind of the way the team Everybody's plays. Everybody's shuffling around, yeah. They're not doing terrible, though, getting a foothold there and, and having some success, but Cuck able to recover and clean it up relatively quickly. Let's see what Funk can do on this right side going up against Dragonskin. Dragonskin, I think, has spotted him. Funk gonna... Funk playing very kind of passive, uh, but it's going to almost work out for him. Uh, unfortunately for him, Pijacker comes up there at the last minute and saves Dragon Ken's life. Back to the left side of the map, Fabian fighting for a foothold against Blackhand and Who Am I Blowing? Arcana. Playing 
very intelligently as the NCO, just trying to hold for that spawn, it seems. Yes. Yeah, just playing very passive, trying not to let the enemy team know he's there. He is going to go down, and it's down to Arcana, and and that's it. Arcana dies. It's going to be a, back on the aggression for Cuck. And SMW are going to have an okay setup for defense with Storm Ginger and Fafoa immediately in this sort of middle position where they can start picking up this push on the left side. But Black Hand and Hachiman making pretty good progress across the left side of the map, and the Black Hand going to get into the trench already. CPU might spot him down that lane, but he's looking out to No Man's and Black Hand's going to get the kill. Fofoa and Storm Ginger seem completely unaware of Black Hand's position, actually. And it's going to be Fabian to have to deal with him, but still unaware. Fabian now going to be aware of him, I think. But we also have Hachiman and Requiem of Flight. Re Requiem of Flight? I don't know how to say his name exactly, but... It's overly dramatic. <laughs> it is, it is. I've when seen SMW make some call-outs uh, in the chat, so you have to wonder what their kind of communication is um, well, and how with, S we with SMW, delay. you have an interesting situation where some of them have mics and some of them don't, but also they are speaking... Some of them are speaking Portuguese, some of them are speaking Spanish, and some of them are speaking English. So it is definitely... Uh, they are definitely... It's impressive how well their communication is considering the barriers they have. That, I will say. But it definitely does give them a little bit of a disadvantage against some of these teams that are all speaking the same language, like Cuck. I didn't realize that Cuck spoke their own language. Yes. I thought speak it was just a common bond over... Uh, no, they speak, the they, speak the, they speak the language of uh, 4chan. Um, <laughs> in fact, language, they're at, Which is just they're, memes. In fact, all their forms of communication are memes. All of them. Um, I don't know how they do it. it it's an amazement, but uh, the, the, they're all... The Cuck Clan coordinating an, an entire strike using only memes. Incredible stuff. Yes, it is. It really is. But going well for Cuck. Um, seems like they might be capping the trench right now. Seems as they are. About 25% capped now. Uh, SMW, you're going to have something to say about that. Fabian gonna, and Storm Jim are going to get in there. And what a great spawn there from SMW. You're going to spy pretty much, spawn pretty much their whole team, but Pijacker and Blackhand doing some damage, though that artillery from Fabian is going to do even more. And Cuck going to try and push up on this right side now. And SMW don't really have anyone over there. So it's going to be a, a good foothold for them. 20 seconds left on the attack timer. For Cuck, they're going to want to try and get a cap before they have to endure the dangers of foothold overtime. Still no uh, no points for either side here, guys. Uh, really close match. Uh, do you guys do you guys see a, an advantage one side or the other? Well, obviously, Cuck are going to feel more comfortable because they're in the position where they can make a cap and get that point and they need to win the game. But SMW not too worried yet either. As even if Cuck get a cap, there's still plenty of time for SMW to answer that with caps of their own, with 18 minutes left in the match. So I don't think either team has too much pressure on them yet, and it's hard to say who's gonna win this. I think Cuck right now is in the better position, but I think that could change rather quickly. Absolutely, and based on the scoreboard alone, uh, the kills are not that far apart. Uh, obviously, SMW still has some catching up to do, but uh, just a small shift of momentum, and they could be back on top. That is, of course, the other thing to consider, is that if we do end up with a tie game, we will be going to kill. So these players might be starting to think about, okay, if this is going to be a tie game, you know, do I want to be that super aggressive player who's dying a lot, or do we want to play more passive and try and get kills just in case there is that tie? Definitely something they're going to start to consider. Kalinkadink playing that spoiler role in the No Man's taking out multiple players from SMW. But SMW is already in on the right side. Fafoa by himself going to get taken out. Storm Ginger going to come up behind, see if he can't spawn in some of his teammates. But it looks like Kumai Blowing is aware of his position. Yeah, Cuck taking some serious losses on that artillery strike there. And Huanchop 
gonna try and get him and put a clinky link again with that spoiler position just that staying in that no man's as long as he can and he's gonna get executed for it but he took out four or five players from SMW so it's gonna be worth it and the attack from SMW so far seems pretty spread out and disorganized looks like they're gonna get a good solid push here on this far left side they're going to have to deal with the pickers of Clinkadink and the Black Hand. The Black Hand showing himself to be a strong picker this half, um, sort of taking up the reins that Dragonskin was in the first half. Dragonskin a little bit quieter this half with the Black Hand kind of taking his place. So that's 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 actually an amazing thing to see from such a new team that, that as, as a roster that they actually have some depth. I think uh, I think all of us were pretty uh, were pretty much expecting a one-sided victory by uh, by Cuck here after the uh, <laughs> after the unraveling of the, the last round there with the player leaving and having some connection issues, uh, but SMW definitely holding their own here. Yeah, they're not going to give up without a fight. SMW, even when they play teams much better than them, them like One E or uh, or or Air in the past or PC, they've always been a scrappy team and they've always been a team that you know just don't give up. There's some teams when they start to lose, you know, they have trouble, they get worse as they start to lose, and they just kind of give up. SMW is not one of those teams. This is a team that will fight to the last man. Uh, although I will say it does seem, I know, uh, uh, Nord, I know you mentioned this, it does seem that their, their, um, their attacks do seem to be getting a bit less coordinated as the, as the match goes on. We're, we're kind of seeing um, sloppier offensives overall. Well, you know what? They are start probably starting to feel a little bit of fatigue playing two matches back to back like this. Uh, can be a little bit tiring. Um, this is a very non-stop game, you know. Uh, it's not like some other games where you know there's breaks. Uh, there, well, there are breaks in between halves and in between matches, but the, the, when the match is going on, it's pretty much 24 minutes of non-stop you playing, which is can be can lead to some fatigue and it can lead to some you know. Uh, a drop in skill level or in team communication level, um, especially when you have players dropping some of your better players and having to uh, adjust to that can definitely give you some some negative uh, results. But SMW is still doing pretty well considering the situation they're in, having played two matches in a row and being down one of their better players. They are as adjusting a, much better to attacks as well. They have been shifting more. They haven't been grouping up. Uh, so the artillery hasn't been more effective. They've they've changed their strategy around to play this team. Uh, as a as a rel relatively novice player, um, I guess I I wouldn't uh, I I find myself easily frustrated by this game. I once saw someone in in a in in chat refer to it as a dying simulator. <laughs> Which, uh, in that regard, I suppose it's pretty accurate to World War One. Um, it's uh, it, do you do you do you see the uh, the frustration ever settle in at these high level matches um, where uh, where it does seem like you're kind of running into a wall over and over again? Certainly for certain players, and you know there are certain positions and certain roles in each team which can be frustrating for certain players. Like sometimes your job is just to lay prone and spawn your team, which isn't a very fun position to play, but it can be an important position for your team. And sometimes you can see those players get frustrated when they have poor score lines, and, and sometimes that can affect the rest of the team too. But I think uh, at this level of play, most players are used to the fact that this is a team game. It's not all about your score line or how well you're doing. It's about how well your team is doing. Uh, so I think most people understand that. SMW recently wiped, but only able to spawn three of their players. They have to wait a whole other uh, wave for the rest of them to respawn. That's and that's going to get some good cap points on their four cock. They're probably not going to be able to cap the trench in its entirety as they do have some resistance from these two SMW players. But they're definitely going to be able to get a good chance at it. And if they can wipe this next spawn relatively quickly, they may get a cap on this trench. And we're going to see them picking across this little hill in the middle here, trying to take out those SMW players so they can get that cap. And yeah, SMW just sprinting down those lanes, uh, taking taking pretty big losses. Yeah, they're trying to have. They have to get some kills 
Otherwise, Cuck is going to cap here, and Cuck becoming very aggressive, even though they were already capping. That's probably a little bit of a mistake. It might give SMW a chance. Yeah. Actually, oh, that was a huge mistake from Cuck. No, now yeah. SM SMW is going to be able to get back in and clear out this trench. That was that was those were, that was yeah. Cuck kind of gave up their free cap there. Really cocked it up there. <laughs> uh, yeah, they were they were just begging for a grenade that whole time. But also good play from SMW to capitalize on that mistake from Cuck, you know? Definitely. Uh, it's not just something for your enemy to make mistakes. You have to capitalize on those mistakes, and that's what SMW did there. I think that's sort of, uh, that's that's a great point to bring up, is the, the capitalizing on those mistakes with the, the meticulous nature of this game where you're advancing. Uh, so, I mean, the action is constant, but it is, it is, it is, it is, uh, it is a slower burn. Um, than uh, than a, you know a battlefield one or something like that. Um, so you have to it, more than most games, uh, you have to pick your spots um, and and limit losses uh, as much as you can. But Cuck coming right back at it, probably going to get a cap here, having completely wiped SMW, and they're going to spawn in the forest and they're going to have to cross this this field which has a lot of crossfires on it. Kalinkening is going to be happy with this, try and pick off these players from long range. Pijacker in the close position, but SMW doing a good job of cleaning that up. You would have think they were in a d disadvantageous position, but it seems like Cuck wasn't quite prepared for that assault. And it looks like Cuck did get the cap in, so they're going to be up one, and it's going to be SMW now to have to spend the next 10 minutes trying to tie the game back up. And if Cuck are able to push back SMW here, in the next two or three minutes and push on, there's a good chance that they'll be able to win the match. Yeah, SMW. Arcana in the in the in their team speak is uh or in their team chat expressing concern over uh getting clustered up. Do you think these guys are uh the, the SMW is having having trouble staying spread out? They've, been, they've definitely been punished by a couple of artillery strikes till this point. Well, this is kind of a paradox of playing attack against an artillery squad is you want to clump up in order to uh, attack one position with strength, but then you have to spread out very quickly because if you stay clumped up for too long, then there's going to be an arty strike coming. So it's kind of, you have to be very fluid with your movements and be aware of when arty is coming and where it's coming and how to spread out your team quickly when that artillery is incoming. And it's a very delicate balance and even very good teams have trouble with this sometimes. How much of a how much of a warning is a player given before the artillery starts dropping? Are they given any kind of indication on screen? Um, there's an audio sound you'll hear of the the artillery being launched from far away, and you can actually see it in the sky in, at a distance. Um, so very good leaders of teams will be aware that artillery is coming in and tell their team to spread out. And you can't really tell where it's coming. It's more of just a guess of okay, where if I were the enemy team, where would I place the artillery here? And then, of course, there's things your team can do to avoid dying to artillery. You can prone, you can jump in holes, you know. These will give you a higher percentage chance of surviving an artillery barrage, but it's still a very dangerous... If you're caught in an artillery barrage, there's a good chance you're going to die, no matter what you do. But Cuck looking strong in their position now. 48 seconds now for SMW to get a foothold. This is this is going to be an uphill climb for the rest of the way out for uh, for SMW. Yep, Juan Chop getting to that left side, but who am I blowing coming up? And Piejacker taking him out as well. Piejacker having another good game. This is not a terrible position to attack from because you do have this large forest that covers a lot of your no man's land. But once you get to the edge of that, there's a lot of crossfires that can take you out. And even moving through the forest, there's a lot of crossfires. So you have to be careful on attack. And position. it seems like SMW hasn't really been able to make that coordinated attack needed to recap a trench like this. They've been sporadic, sending two guys one way, two guys the other way, two guys going up the middle, and they just haven't been able to make a strong push against a well-developed line. And that's going to be it. Uh, Cuck are going to be able to push here now, and if they're able to even just keep SMW on this trench, they'll be confident in their victory. Seven minutes now, SMW have to cap something in the next seven minutes otherwise it will be a tie or it won't be a tie rather it will be a win for cuck 
they need to cap something in the next seven minutes for it to be a tie. And the longer this takes, the more SMW's chances at even uh, winning the game outright uh, diminish. I think at this point they're going to be happy with a tie if they can force that. Cuck, of course, going to want to uh, keep attacking this trench and even widen the score uh, as much as they possibly can just to ensure that they don't get any in any sticky situations. Is a, is a second trench here going to be uh, a dagger? You know, it could be difficult for Cuck because there's a lot of positions on this trench that you can get into as SMW. There's lots of nice tree lines you can move along. There's a nice hill you can play on. Really, this is a trench where whoever is in the trench has a big advantage, and once you can get in that trench and clear it, then you're 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 winning. I mean, I guess that's true of most trenches, but some trenches are easier to retake than others. And I would definitely say Cuck is slightly favored on this trench, having more cover to advance. This is literally an uphill battle. Uh, if uh, a <laughs> SMW player does spawn outside of the trench, he'll more than likely have to run up that hill in zero cover to get back in the trench. Exactly. So it can be very difficult, especially if uh, SMW can get a foothold on that right side. There's going to be some good crossfires on that hill. And so long as uh, Cuck doesn't have any position in the trench, it's going to be very easy for SMW to get up in it because there's no crossfires there behind the hill. But as soon as uh, Cock are able to get on the hill, it's going to become much more difficult for SMW to get into that trench. And Cuck making a large push uh, to that trench that will give them a free road to take that hill right now. Yeah, it's an only Funk there to resist them. And he's a very passive player. When he sees that number of people, he's going to go prone and wait for his teammates to arrive, but it's not going to happen in time. And Cock got to have control of that hill. This is huge for them. They're going to want to prevent SMW from taking it back. And the Black Hand taking out three players. That w their wild great play from him. Actually, I guess he didn't take out all three of them. I guess there was some, some team help there. But Pijack are also getting on the aggressive, pushing down the hill. And Requiem of Flight doing the same. Just keeping SMW on their toes. Making them uncomfortable in their position. And they're going to spawn more players. But again... They have, like, height advantage in any combat environment, whether it's digital or real or it's a strategy game or an FPS game. Height is always a huge advantage. And, wow, great nade coming in there. Going to take out Fofoa, Hachi Man, with a great nade. And SMW going to try and retake this hill, the focal point of this trench. And Dragon's Ken and Hachi Man going to try and hold them back, which they have done so far with... Yeah, SMW at a big, big, big disadvantage here. Yeah, now that now that Cuck have this hill and foothold over time, they're only six kills away from that momentum, which they probably will get shortly. And there's a good chance they're going to cap this trench here, actually, as we see very little SMW resistance in it. And that's going to be the cap for Cuck. Great play from them, and they've pretty much secured the victory now. SMW going to have to hope that Cuck will beat. Um, uh, average Joes well actually I think SMW even if Average Joes win SMW will win the tiebreaker because they won the match against Average Joes so I think SMW can be comfortable in the fact that they'll well actually if Average Joes beat Cuck we'll be in a weird situation and have to go to trench caps in order to decide who mm -hmm. goes through but so SMW, I think, want Cuck to definitely want Cuck to win this match. Cuck is definitely going to be um, going to be favored to win that match, having having beat SMW. SMW having beat, of course, Average Joe's last just last game. Yes, of course, and obviously it will come down to map. Maybe this is just a map that Cuck is really good at. Maybe Average Joe's can give give them a close match on a different map. We'll have to see. But from what I've seen of from this Cuck team so far, they have more veteran players uh, than. Uh, than Average Joes has, I would definitely say I would definitely be favoring Cuck in that next match against Average Joes. Yeah, Cuck we'll just showing on. a dominating performance with uh, four players well above 30 kills and with very low death rates as well. I think uh, the highest of those is 22, and that's from Piejacker uh, with 56 kills. And Pijacker getting 56 kills playing in such an aggressive manner, that just shows how 
how well they've been able to do this half. He, uh, he, he seems to be moving and running and gunning in a way that nobody else in this game is really uh, even attempting to. You know, he's doing a very good job playing that position for his team, and uh, I really think that SMW, their, their communication issues definitely make it harder for them to deal with a player like that, because dealing with a player like that is all about your team's communication. That type of player will wreak havoc with your team if you don't have communication, but they are also relatively easy to shut down if your team has good communication, so it, it, it really comes down to that, and that's why Pijacker has been so successful this game, I think, because he's able to get behind their line and wreak a lot of havoc before SMW are able to communicate to their teammates that he's there. But at this point, there is pretty much no way for SMW to come back and tie this game. Well, there is literally no way for them to. Um, great play from Cuck. Um, definitely standout players are like people like Piejacker. The Black Hand in the in the second half did very well. Dragons Ken in the first half. Um, who am I blowing? Kalinkadink looking good in both halves. Um, really, just, just a well-rounded team for them with a decent amount of depth. It is all but over here, guys. Uh, about 45 seconds remaining in the in the game. Um, what uh, what are we what are we expecting to see uh, in the next match? We thinking uh, I, I mean, Cucks, like we said, has got to be uh, has got to be at an advantage or at least favored. Um, well, I'll have to I'll tell you this. Cuck was the team I knew the least about before this uh, before this tournament, and after seeing them play in this match, I have. I feel like they may be the strongest of the three teams in the round robin stage. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they do against teams like 1E and PC, but against these round robin stage teams, I don't think they're going to have a problem. I think they will. They'll have an, a relatively easy time taking down uh, uh, Average Joe's. Of course, Average Joe's um, improving in that last match, so we'll have to see how they do against Cuck. It could be a close match. Or it could be a blowout for Cuck. I would be very surprised if it was a blowout for Average Joes. That would uh, not be something I would be expecting. Very Cuck with a resounding victory. Uh, SMW did what they could, uh, but they just could not hang uh, with how well some of the um, Cuck players could really rack up some of those kills. Well, in the first half was very close, but unfortunately losing Banshee, SMW lost a lot of their firepower and a lot of their capability to deal with players like Piejacker and uh, Who Am I Blowing. So, Absolutely. So that second half was definitely uh, largely in favor for uh, for Cuck. Yeah, the Cuck, uh, Cuck, the Cuck clan uh, definitely took over there in a way that we didn't see in that first half. First half being very close, 0-0 zero, zero, zero to zero tie. Uh, but as you guys said, going into that half, um, that map tended to favor the central powers, um, which uh, which which probably uh, gave Cook a good amount of confidence going in there. Uh, All right, that gives uh, each team uh, that gives that give uh, that gives Cook one win, uh, and that gives SMW one win and one loss. And uh, our go on. And um, yes, and Average Joe's sitting at one loss at the moment, so we'll have to see how this last match goes, and that will decide who our top two teams will be for going into the semifinals. Yes, you can. Um, and I think we will be going to a short break in between matches now. That is right. correct. Going to a quick break, guys. We will. Uh, we'll see you back in, in just, just about a ten minute minutes. Here. Yeah. Just about 10 minutes, we got the uh, the next game coming up here uh, between Average Joes and Cuck. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you in about 10 minutes. Thank you.